uh, what do you have? Well, we had the clothes on, the wet clothes on our back. Uh, they were like, hmm, not good, not good. You better make phone calls to a credit card company. Do the things you would normally do in those kind of situations, which we did. We just made a few phone calls and called a few people and so on and so forth. And then uh, we did seem to be able to have the, the number of, the, of our friends, so we called them. They still weren't home, but we just left an answering machine message. We're over at this park. We're, we just arrived in Miami, even though we haven't met you yet, we, we have this interesting uh, situation going on <laughs> over here. But we can't really come to your house. Uh, could you come to the park and pick us up? Leave the me left a message. So, shortly thereafter, uh, our friends arrived. The, the police were there taking down some kind of a police report and asking a bunch of questions and so on and so forth. And their friends picked us up and they said, well, come on, come home with us. Uh, and so, with the clothes on our back, which were still quite wet, we, we hopped in the car and on the way home, uh, the man, the husband, said, uh, he said, well, you mind if we just make one stop before we go home? I said, listen, hey, we're just happy to be in the car and have a place to go, actually. He said, I, I go to AA and I do a lot of work with the 12 steps and so, can I stop by my AA center? I just want you to meet my, my buddies, my friends, my sponsor. You people are so cool, I think, you're peaceful. I'd love them to meet you. So we, they took us over there, they introduced us to all the people, they said, oh, they're here visiting us, and they came down all the way from Cincinnati, Ohio, and they came here to Miami. But their car was stolen, and all they have on their, with them is the clothes on their back, and a lot of people were so loving, they came up and they said, oh, please, please, we, we've got to help. We're doing a clothing drive. And we would love for you to go in the back and just go through. We've got piles and piles of clothes. This is Miami, Florida. Uh, wow. <laughs> we went in the back. Shoes, socks, pants, a whole wardrobe. I mean, basically they even had suitcases for us. And, they, and within about 20 minutes, both Beverly and I had completely new wardrobes. In 20 minutes, completely new wardrobes, all the way from top to bottom. And I was trying some of the stuff on, and we were back in the back room, and Beverly said, Wow, the Holy Spirit dresses you better than you do. <laughs> the Holy Spirit's got some taste, at least. You have no clue about fashion. But I'm telling you, now things are clicking. I, I feel better being with you already. Because uh, you've got some threads, you've got some decent clothes. Okay, well, this is the way that it works. <laughs> you don't know your own best interest, and then you turn it over to the universe, and here it comes. Get ready, your socks are going to get knocked off. So, we had clothes. And then we went, and we stayed, but we walked in, when we got home with these people where we were staying. We'd never been to their home, we had never met them before. We walked in, I'd say it was about 30 seconds after we get in the door, the phone rings and it was, uh, it was like a Friday night, it was about 7.30, 8 o'clock now, and it was the police and the police uh, said, oh, we found your car, but we've taken it to our impound lot and it's Friday and it's past closing hours, so you're going to have to wait till Monday morning to go get your car, because it's impounded for the weekend. So, okay. So, we had a wonderful weekend. Um, we actually uh, went with these friends to the Course of Miracles meeting and um, we shared a little bit of our experiences in the Course meeting and the facilitator said, well, we usually take up a collection uh, here, but uh, we, we please let us uh, donate the collection to you uh, at the Course of Miracles meeting. And the funny thing was, the only thing in the car that we had borrowed was a tent. And we had borrowed this tent from a man in Cincinnati at this church. And we were thinking, we're, we, were, we were going to do some camping. And so, we had gone, before the Course of Miracles meeting, we had gone to this sporting goods store and we would seen this tent that he said he would offer to us for like $72. It was a used tent that was 
It was almost identical to the one that the man had loaned to us. We thought, well, we probably got to replace that. He loaned us his tent. We don't even own the tent. It's borrowed. It was, he said, I'll give it to you for $72. We said, well, we don't have that. So when we went to the course meeting right after that, and they passed the basket, they pulled it out, they counted it, and they said, here, take this as a donation. It's uh, $72. Okay. Oh, here we go. New wardrobe, and now looks like the tent is the next step. So the tent came in. Then, Monday morning, we went in and to the impound lot. We went there, and uh, the car had been stripped. The steering column had been stripped, and it was emptied out. Pretty much completely emptied out. But we finally got to the car that we opened the doors up and we looked and we could see the steering column was stripped. And we looked in the back seat and there were our two Course in Miracles books uh, <laughs> sitting up there, unwanted. <laughs> uh, and I just looked at Beverly and I said, See, nothing you need will be denied you. I think we need those books. I think this is part of our lesson. Looks like we got the car back and we got the books. The Holy Spirit's like really saying, and a new wardrobe and a tent. So well, we're down to what we need here. And then apparently down there in Miami they have so many of these kind of events that they have a whole industry build up that, re that rebuilds stripped um, uh, steering columns. We don't have that in Cincinnati, but I guess it's a port city, so there's a whole industry. So we had some friends that borrowed us some money. The steering column got they said, do you want us to do the cosmetics? And we said, no, just, uh, just do the electronics, just so we can drive the car. So it kind of looked like R2-D2 and C3PO, uh, you know, these, it, but it ran. So, so then we went up along uh, the other coast and we kept telling the story about how everything was provided that we needed and everything. And people would tell us, Oh, I was so depressed, and now I heard what you guys just went through, and, and I'm so uplifted. So, at different churches and horse groups, it was like turning into an inspiring parable, helping lift people up. And I looked at Beverly, and I said, Well, if Jesus had come to us ahead of time, I said, I'm going to borrow your car for a while. Uh, I want to turn it into an inspirational parable that you can help uplift your brothers and sisters on the, the Gulf side of the Florida. Would you do it? She said, Yeah. I, Jesus came to me and asked for the car, and I said, well, that's kind of the way it's going to go in our life now. So that was just one little miracle story I will tell you. That was back in 1992, and if I had to write a book of miracle parables like that, wow. I don't, in 18 years, uh, Webster's Dictionary would look tiny compared to me putting down in paper all the miracle experiences that I've had of being cared for, of being watched over, being loved and nurtured, of, of not having problems. I've even, uh, I even ran out of gas one time and I wasn't aware of it and I coasted down this long mountain and took the exit, the first exit I was guided to and coasted down this next road and coasted right into a gas station. I coasted for like two miles and was coasted right to a gas station. Still I was unaware that the car was out of gas until they pumped the car with gas and smiled at me and some man, I read his lips, he said, you ran out of gas at a gas station. Like, how lucky can you get? But to me it's not luck. You know, it's like Jesus says, you know, nothing you need will be denied you and, and not one seeming difficulty but will melt way before you reach it. That's not what I learned in college. I took classes in problem solving that didn't say that the problems would melt away before you reach them. It was more, how do you get out of a tangled mess? It seems like a nasty problem. Money problems, health problems, relationship problems, environmental problems, and you're telling me that, that it will melt away before you even get to the problem. Whoa, that's, that's deep stuff.